The best Bond. Very clearly Sean Connery. Second best? Definitely Pierce Brosnan. Don't hate. Daniel Craig is fine. Don't get me wrong. Wait, this is chemistry class. We're not talking about James Bond today. We're talking about chemical bonds. Specifically, we're going to talk about the octet rule and how that applies to multiple covalent bonds. How do we do double bonds? How do we do other things? So, let's talk about that. We're also going to talk about something called resonance. As we get into it, let's take a look. So, last time we did stuff like this. Oh, here's carbon with CH4. CH4 has a total number of eight valence electrons. That means that we have eight electrons to pass around. And then we made a bond to each of them. And we said, oh, that's super nice. Because happy carbon, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hydrogen's happy because it's got two and we're all good. Okay, today we're going to start off with this one. What if I have carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide, as we look at this, has 4 plus 12 valence electrons, giving us 16 valence electrons. So far, so good. I put my carbon here and put my oxygen over here and oxygen over here. Well, now let's just add in all of our little 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, if we look at that, you go, everything's happy. Hooray, we're done. But wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh-oh. Frowny face. So with that frowny face, we see that that's not the same as that. That means that there must be some other orientation for all these atoms. So if we look at this, first thing we're going to check is the total number of electrons and then the octet rule. Once we finish that, we are going to use our cheater biology rules and say carbon typically has four bonds connected to it. Oxygen typically has two bonds connected to it and see if that helps us in figuring out what is the structure for this bad boy hmm one two three four oh carbon's good oxygen one two and oxygen now we've got eight electrons here that means we're going to take one two three four five six seven eight electrons and if we look at that Bum, 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 bum. What emerges is a beautiful carbon dioxide molecule. Now, this connection here is called a double bond. Everybody loves double bonds. Now, double bonds means that what we're doing here is we're sharing more than just two electrons. We're sharing four electrons between the two atoms. So a single bond involves two electrons. Double bonds are four, and you just guessed it, triple bonds have six. Let's look at a triple bond, shall we? What about our other diatomic we haven't talked about so far? Nitrogen. If we look at nitrogen, we say, oh, valence electrons equals hmm, <laughs> 14. Because nitrogen is in the, pull it over here. Oops, just kidding. It's 10. Because nitrogen is in our fifth column. Bad, Mr. Jacobs, bad. So 10 valence electrons. And if we look at that, to set this up, what we'll do is we'll say nitrogen connects to nitrogen. And if we look at that, huh, well, that's going to be 6 plus six, hmm, plus two does not get us to 10. We're way over. Even if we do a double bond here, it would be one, two, three, four, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Ooh, no. I don't like that. So what it actually forms is a triple bond connection. And if we look at that, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 electrons, not 14, 10 electrons, all set up, and it's a triple bonded molecule. This right here, folks, is why all of that nitrogen that you breathe in the air, about 70%, is not that reactive. It's really well connected to itself. And it takes a ton of energy to break and then reform these bonds as we're looking at it. So nitrogen, N2, is a diatomic molecule. Why? Well, it's a diatomic molecule because that's what makes it octet happy. If we look at each of these, eight electrons, eight electrons, eight electrons, eight electrons. Let's look at oxygen. Our other diatomic molecule that we haven't talked about so far. Hmm. So if I were to put six here and six here, O2, if we look at oxygen, and I'm second guessing myself, oxygen <clears throat> is in the sixth column. So this is going to have 12 valence electrons. So the correct, if we had this, it would be six here six here and that would give us 14 electrons it's too many but if we have a double bond one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve twelve valence electrons all spread throughout this entire piece sweet feels real good doesn't it now let's look at some wacky things are you ready to get wacky I don't know if you're ready to get wacky yet because when we look at this in the textbook there are some of these that are pretty straightforward and some of these are a little bit interesting so let's talk about the cyanide ion so if we look at the cyanide ion <clears throat> cyanide ion is c n minus that minus, if you remember, means it has one extra electron. Now with that one extra electron, we see, okay, wait a second. So <clears throat> if I have carbon and I have nitrogen, we'll make one connection here, and I'm going to put this in brackets. Whenever you're dealing with an ion, you typically put it in brackets and then just put a minus here. So we know that this has one extra electron. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, if we look at this, cyanide, we have four, and yes, this is a deadly poison. It's also very natural, very, very natural. Occurs in all sorts of places in nature. So carbon, has four valence electrons. Nitrogen has five, so we have nine plus one for our extra electron, giving us 10 electrons. So how do we do this? Well, what we're looking at here is we're saying, hmm, how is this going to be set up? First thing we're gonna do, and this is where using the biology cheater method doesn't really work. So. We can try all sorts of different possibilities here of different ways to set this up, but none of them are gonna be correct. All right, if I look at this and I say, all right, we're gonna leave it like this, then it would be one, two, three, let me get my pencil so we can erase them as time goes on. So if we look at this, let's say we just said, all right, let's just single bond it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, too many electrons. Okay, so we know it's not a single. How about a double bond? Would that make anything happy? Well, let's find out, shall we? With a double bond, we would need one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So that gives us eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Still not enough. So 
You've seen it in the textbook already. You're shouting at your, your screens, triple bond, triple bond. So if we look at this, and I'm going to put these on this side, and you're going to see why next week on why I do that. It's because the electrons separate from each other. You're going to do some awesome labs that have that inside of it. So what's the deal with this? Hmm. Well, if we look here, does nitrogen have an octet? Yes, it does. Does carbon have an octet? Yes, it does. Is it following that fun biology rule? No, because this is where it falls apart a little bit. So that's more of a guideline that kind of help you on your path. Whereas it's not really how it works. Um, it's extra. Hmm. Hmm. If we look at this, we have our 10 valence electrons all spread out as we're going through this. So we have a triple bond and we just have our extra electron that's here. So for all of them, let's say we wanted to talk about the ammonium ion. Let's take a look at it. Now, since I know all of you, you immediately saw the words ammonium ion and you shouted at the screen, NH4 plus, NH4 plus. I know this. Mr. Jacobs told me I needed to know this and these were never going away. So I totally know it. It is NH4 plus. So if we're to look at this, nitrogen is five plus four is going to be nine minus one electrons giving us eight electrons to play around with if we look at this then nh4 plus we're going to have n to an h to an h to an h to an h put that in brackets so that we know that this is an ion and as a whole this has a plus one charge and if we look here oh wow we're already done one two one two three four five six seven eight Bam, octet for nitrogen, duet, do, re, mi, fa, sol. Sorry, um, you guys find being alone just makes you turn into a crazy person? Because I find that for sure. Um, NH4 plus then, this is why it has that plus one charge. Yes, that arbitrary thing I made you memorize, there was a reason for it. In fact, we're going to look at a lot of the different polyatomic ions and see why do they have the charge that they do you'll see in the book they go through nitrate and to explain nitrate we're going to have to do something a little interesting because we need to talk about resonance so resonance is where something sort of changes or can exist in two states to understand resonance you're really going to need to understand that what you see in one configuration is not always how it stays for forever. Let me give you an example of this. Sometimes things change unexpectedly. So resonance occurs when more than one valid Lewis dot structure can be drawn for a given molecule or ion. The textbook gives an example of CO2 and a couple different structures that can uh, be drawn for that. And also NO2 minus one, which is nitrate. I'm gonna give you an example of NO3 minus one, nitrate, okay? If I add up the total number of valence electrons, nitrogen has five, each oxygen has six, so that's 18. And then the minus one charge means that one electron was gained. So that's a total of 24 valence electrons that we're gonna draw. Nitrogen is the central atom, and I'm gonna put the three oxygens around it. I'm gonna satisfy nitrogen first with eight valence electrons. So I've used up eight. So I understand that instead of putting electrons in here, 
you just go ahead and draw single bonds in. So I'll go ahead and do that. So this would be a single bond, single bond, single bond. And right now nitrogen has eight electrons and it's satisfied. So I've drawn eight, which means I have 16 left to go. I'm going to give, I'm going to spread them around as equally as possible. So I'm going to give four, eight, 12. So I've used up 12. I only have four valence electrons to go. Okay. So the question is, where do I put them? I have three oxygens and right now they're all the same. Okay. So which oxygens get the, the two remaining pairs? The answer is it doesn't matter. You choose. So I'm going to give these two oxygens the remaining four electrons which means that this oxygen, I'm gonna draw in like a little box around it. Right now it's unsatisfied because it only has six. Every other atom has eight, okay? When one atom is dissatisfied, the answer is we cannot add two more electrons. We've already used up all of our electrons and we cannot add more. The answer is I need to share more. So this lone pair on the nitrogen needs to get shared with this oxygen and this becomes a double bonded oxygen, okay? I have to put the whole thing in brackets with a minus one charge, okay? Now that's nitrate, but here's where the resonance comes in. Remember that I chose that this oxygen would get the double bond, but what if I had chosen that this oxygen would get the double bond? I'm gonna start again, three oxygens, single bond, single bond, single bond, I'm not gonna put that lone pair in because I know that's gonna end up getting shared. We're gonna make these oxygen single bonded. Okay, and this is gonna be the double bonded oxygen. Okay, I still have exactly 24 electrons. Okay, 12 pairs. This is nitrate minus one. That is completely valid. The double bond could have been there. And when, it, when there's resonance, we usually draw an arrow between these to say these are, I, these are equal, these are identical, okay? And vice versa, or in addition, I could have put the, um, the double bond on this oxygen, okay? Really, the answer is the, the, the double bond could be on any oxygen, okay? And in reality, the double bond is like anywhere, so it's actually equally divided amongst the, uh, the three oxygens, okay? So... Um, like in, in college chemistry, what you end up doing, this is kind of advanced. Whoa, teaching you something advanced. What you end up doing is you end up putting like dotted lines here, here, and here to say, really, that double bond could have been anywhere, okay? This is what we call resonance. Resonance is I can draw m multiple ones that are valid. So the final one I'm gonna draw is the double bond over here. Again, to show that it really could have been anywhere. These are all valid. And what you end up doing is you draw nitrate minus one, and then this arrow, you draw an arrow like this underneath the structure. This is the symbol for resonance. Okay. Um, let me give one more resonance example. I'm going to give a contrast of resonance versus no resonance. Okay. Actually, challenge. CO3 minus 2, PO4 minus 3, carbonate ion and phosphate. Why don't you pause the video right here and see if you can draw the correct structures for each of these and label which one has resonance with the resonance arrow underneath. I am gonna draw the final answer now. And you can check your answer against mine. This is carbonate with a minus two charge. 
and it does have resonance because that double bonded oxygen could have been the one to the right or could have been this one on top or could have been this one on the left. It, that double bond could have been anywhere. Whereas phosphate, again, you should have paused the video and drawn this out. Phosphate has 32 valence electrons. I think that's right. Five plus 24 plus three is 32. Yep. And it has four single bonds with a minus three charge. This has no resonance because there's no double bond. All of the oxygens are single bonded and that double, there's no double bond to draw. So there's only one valid answer for this uh, Lewis dot structure. So therefore there is no resonance with phosphate. Now, because there's only one valid orientation for this, there's no resonance. Now, it's helpful to remember that in resonance, things could switch back and forth at any time. Wink, wink. If we look at this, we have resonance. We don't have resonance. All right, guys. So this is pretty much it for all the new content before spring break. After spring break, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the VSEPR model. Vesper, sort of. And uh, we're going to read through some of that before spring break so that you're ready for the labs when we do them. You also have a quiz to take online about the first couple sections from this, um, and it's found in your packet. So let me know if you all have any questions, and um, I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. Oh, sorry, one more thing. I just remember um, <clears throat> there are some exceptions to the rule, as always. So boron is wacky. It can sometimes be satisfied with six valence electrons. And sometimes phosphorus and sulfur also. But not always. So we'll take a look at some of those examples later. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day and a great spring break. Make sure you're enjoying the outside as to get away from your screens. All right, I hope you're all doing well. I'm praying for all of you and uh, have a great rest of your day.